As a kid, I grew up going on family road trips in an old nine-passenger Chevy Suburban, and I loved those big bench seats. But I'll admit, I didn't love sharing them with my sisters, and I always thought the answer was more bench seats. So eight-year-old Alex would be very proud of one of my latest purchases, a 15-passenger Chevy van. I bought this van sight unseen out of North Dakota for $4,000 because it was missing just a little bit of paint and the transmission was about to blow up and sounded like this. The van got us 800 miles back to Chicago and only when we were home safe did it let out its last breath before going to transmission heaven. Oh, give me some reverse. No. I love this van so much, so I picked up a built transmission for it on my last trip to West Virginia because we're also going to boost my Chevy van and make it the ultimate tow rig, the ultimate abandoned car rescue van. And of course, I'm gonna take my family on long road trips where each one of my kids will get their own bench. I know, the things we do for our kids. But I'm also super excited to announce that we're gonna use this van as a literal vessel to haul thousands of pounds of food to people in need. So it'll be the fill the van with cans event and I couldn't think of a better way to celebrate hitting 1 million subscribers on YouTube than hanging out with you guys and helping those in need with their next few meals. I'll announce the time and place of the subscriber meetup in the next van video and on Facebook and Instagram at Legit Streetcars. Um, but it should just be right around late spring, early summer when we're done with the van and ready to go. And that should also coincide with roughly when I'm gonna hit a million subscribers unless a bunch of you guys surprise me by hitting that subscribe button. So anyway, with that, we have a lot of work to do. All right, so the plan here is to pressure wash underneath the van, as you can see. Even though we drove it home in a gigantic rainstorm, it wasn't enough to fully clean it. And there's a bunch of dirt everywhere. Uh, and we're gonna be taking the transmission out and I just don't want this all over the shop floor. This van is really, really clean in the sense that it's not rusted or there's, I mean, look at this thing. It's like brand new, um, but it's dirty with literal dirt. So let's, let's pressure wash. On second thought, we brought the van outside to pressure wash it because I don't want all this stuff on my floor. Woo! Man, that is a nice frame rail right there. All right, guys, we're done outside, and this is what a 15-passenger Chevy van looks like on a two-post lift. So I think the van is about 6,300 pounds. Uh, this is a 10,000-pound lift, so there aren't any issues here, and it's easy to jack up because it is obviously full frame. Uh, so everything looks really nice. We let it dry overnight, um, and we will definitely be undercoating this van because it's in such good shape. But I think after the transmission job, we're gonna bring it back out and do another cleaning uh, as we missed some spots here. But also I wanna get some degreaser under the whole thing and just really go nuts before we undercoat it because that stuff lasts years. The waxy film from Amsoil that you guys have seen me use uh, lasts a long time, but prep is important and I wanna keep this van looking really good for a long time. So anyway, let me show you guys what we will be replacing this with. <laughs> we're gonna have this van driving like in a matter of hours. I think we could do it in three hours. So this is our new transmission. If you guys saw my C63 drive home video, uh, then you know what this is. It doesn't look like much right now. It's kind of dirty, but it's what's inside that counts. All right, guys, we're about to get down and dirty here. The hoodie's coming off. All right, guys, this is a momentous occasion, the first Nut is being turned on my van by me. Ooh, so far so good. Ooh. Okay, three for three, no casualties. 
This is why I spent so long looking for my van. We could reuse this exhaust hardware. That's amazing. In Chicago, this would have just, we would have been cutting at this point. Like butter. Oh my gosh, really? You're too good to me, Van. Ironically, this thing is not from the South. We bought it out of North Dakota, and I, looking at the Carfax, it was in Illinois, Wisconsin, uh, like Minnesota and North Dakota. It kind of doesn't make any sense unless they were just in the country where they don't use salt and there was just like basically off-road, I guess. Taking construction workers to different construction sites. Oh. But they were clean construction workers, like the interior's not that bad. All right, so let's get rid of this gigantic exhaust. Okay, so I paid $4,000 for the entire van, and I think I'm holding about $1,000 worth of the van right here. Look at these catalytic converters. Well, let's get rid of this drive shaft, and we're gonna run into an issue here, aren't we? Yeah, of course, the CTSVs and the Camaro, they don't have your traditional style uh, slip yoke. I believe this is a different spline as well, but it bolts in the back. So this drive shaft right now won't work, but that's fine. I was gonna get a new one built anyway, so we'll deal with that a little bit later in the video. I don't even think we need to do any of this. This thing is just coming apart. All right, we're gonna remove the transmission linkage and pop this thing in a neutral. Okay, let's clip this guy into neutral oh yeah all right, we're good all right let's get this drive shaft off this gigantic differential oh, this is beautiful oh this is so nice this drive shaft assembly weighs a ton okay that will help okay now let's do stuff there we go Okay. All right. So that's that. All right, here we go. Um, okay. Wow. All right, let's see. Is this drive shaft longer than the McLaren? This is what most people come here to find out. The answers to the most important automotive questions. No. There you have it, guys. A drive shaft out of a 3500 15 passenger Chevy Express is not longer than a McLaren. So many transpan bolts. And I wonder if we're gonna see any carnage just from doing this. We're definitely taking this transmission apart to see what broke. Oh yeah, last one. This is gonna get messy. Okay, just gotta... There we go, look at that. Auto manufacturers, what is the deal with the no drain plug? Oh, we got a nice fuzzy magnet. Oh yeah. Oh, look at this. It's like an alien planet. This is so cool looking. There, this, is an, this is an art form right now. I think I'm an artist. Ooh, that's like a, just a random clump of metal. All right, let's pull this filter. Look at that. That is glittery goodness right there. 202,000 miles. That's all she wrote with this transmission, but not a bad run considering this was, you know, a work van. It was used. It was a legit work van. All right, we're just going to go back together here. Uh, with the pan. I just did that because we're going to be taking this transmission apart on the table and I don't want fluid to get everywhere, kind of like it got on the floor. Oh, and because a lot of you guys always ask me what fluids I run on my cars, I run Amsoil synthetic engine oil, transmission fluid, differential fluid, coolant, brake fluid. Every fluid in all of my cars is Amsoil. Even if you don't use Amsoil products, use them for their amazing and totally free website. So I typed in my 2001 Trans Am WS6. I need to order up all the fluids and it will give you the capacity, the viscosity with temperature recommendations and the torque spec for the drain plug. So you don't have to scour the internet looking at forums and getting bad information. It's all right here for free. You can also get air filters from them, fuel filters. These are Wix products, very, very good and coolant with the capacity, of course, and they have many different additives as well. This PI performance improver is awesome. You just dump that into your gas tank. If you guys need to clean out your firearms, this stuff, many people swear by this. I've tried it, it's amazing, so check that out. And you guys have seen me do the Amsoil undercoating on the Escalade. It only requires about four cans for a big truck like that. And if you guys don't want your trucks or your cars to rust out, 
That stuff works so well. It is so DIY. It comes in a can. It's very affordable. Oh, and speaking of affordable, look at the cost of a complete oil change kit. This is synthetic oil using a very good quality Wix oil filter. Retail price, 72 bucks. But if you become a preferred customer, you're gonna save almost 18. And I'll leave a link down below that'll get you 25% off all Amsoil products, including their famous synthetic engine oil, which comes in many different flavors. And all of my cars run Amsoil synthetic, including the Caprice PPB, and just listen to it. All right, I'm just gonna go around the transmission and unbolt anything attached to it. All right, last up on this side are the lines. So we'll definitely at the very least have to flush out the cooler, but I wanna take a look at it uh, to see if we should upgrade it as well. This is a 3500, so it has the biggest of everything, the biggest cooler, the biggest brakes, the most heavy duty suspension. So it might be bigger than any aftermarket option anyway, but we'll find out. Part of my love for GM is their gaskets are all pretty nice, I gotta say. This stuff rarely leaks. It's in really good shape. A lot of times you can reuse it, we won't be, but great, great GM gaskets here, I must say. All right, so we're gonna pop this out. There we go. There we go. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and a boot. Look at this 202,000 mile LS engine. There is nothing leaking at all. It does have a 16 written on the cylinder head though. So I'm gonna try and find markings in case this has been replaced, but it is possible it's the original. All right, let's get this starter out. This wonderfully reliable GM starter. No issues with these either. I love the LS engine. It's it's my favorite overall engine of all time. All right, so with the cover off, I'm rotating the engine so we can get to these converter bolts. That should be good. Whoa, this thing is a monster. This 3 8 right angle impact is awesome. I've had Milwaukee tools forever, and I just realized that if we set it up on this setting here, that it slows down after the bolt is broken loose. So you can be at max trigger, but it'll know when it's loose, and then it won't go crazy and spin your swivel around or whatever. I've had these literally for like three years. All right, guys, we're moving on to the bell housing now. All right, so these are our cooler lines. God, there's so much room. This is like cheating. All right, we have most of these bolts out, so before we take them all out, we need to support this transmission or it will fall on us. So we just removed the nut that goes on one of the top bell housing studs, and these are the fuel lines. Look at this, this is a return system right here, and these are big. I mean, this can handle some serious power. We might be able to just throw a double pumper in the tank and call it a day, leave all the lines the same. There we go. All right, we're gonna take the cross member out. It's just kind of getting in the way. I'm gonna remove the fuel line bracket too. All right, last bolt. This guy should start to come out. This piece is heavy, that's for sure. Oh wait, oh, that's not that heavy. Got it, cool. Oh, that'll make life so much easier. Look at this. We got some serious transmission venting going on here. Look at this, there's a tube going up there and out there. It's a double trans vent. I'm telling you, they built these vans to go fast. We got it. Um, all right, I wanna see uh, what's wrong with this transmission. Let's go rip it apart. Right, let's see what happened with this transmission. Here is our valve body. Okay, I'd like to point out that this is an eight, the other ones are sevens. With this pulled up, it kind of puts it in a service position so we can take the valve body out. There we go. I'm gonna take the bell housing bolts out. We had to get the big guns out. There's also a retaining clip here that we need to get out. Coming apart. There we go. We get enough fluid. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. This is such a beefy transmission right out of the box. These are phenomenal. Look at how many clutches there are. Totally overheated. 
Wow. Okay, let's get the ring out and take a look at those. All right, let me flip everything over to keep it in order. Oh, there's nothing left. This is a friction. It's turned into a steel. In this situation though, nothing, it doesn't look like a hard part totally let loose. This is just, this is just wear. Yeah, this stuff is probably gonna be fine. Looks awesome, this sounds awesome. Let's take a look at this guy. Yep, nothing's bad in here. Reusable, for sure. Yeah, this pump for sure would need to be replaced. This thing was making a ton of noise at the tail end there. Let's dig a little deeper. Need a little persuasion. No, this is in great shape. That's good. Let's check out our planetary. Man, these clutches look fine too. Yeah, that's all it was. Is that one clutch pack? Look at how cool that looks. The inner workings of a transmission has always fascinated me. It'd be really fun actually to get the uh, rebuild kit and just do it in house. So, all right, we're gonna put this guy back together and we'll save it for a rainy day. Okay, so we already cleaned everything up with a little brake clean, made it look a little bit more presentable and we'll lubricate this seal and a little bit on this guy too. And you can see there's already some lube on here because this is a fresh build, although it had been sitting in a dusty place for about a year and a half. So we're gonna install our dipstick grommet. Next, it's time for a multi-disc torque converter from my guys at Circle D and I run these billet torque converters on anything I need a torque converter for. So my Chevy Caprice, the SVT Lightning, my old supercharged Suburban had one of their converters. They feel amazing and the customer service is great. These are real car guys. Like if you call them, they get like hyped up for your projects. They're super cool. So anyway, wait till you see this. And then before we install our torque converter, we're gonna put a little fluid in it. And of course we're using the good stuff here. Nothing but the best. And it'll blub blub down a little bit. Blub blub. Blub 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 blub. Maybe shake it around a little. Do a little dance and the hokey pokey or whatever. Okay. There we go. Cool. Just gotta make sure it clicks all the way back. God, I hate to now mate this to the engine. It's so nice. You don't like the tri-coat primer on the roof? It's a matte gray gloss white custom paint job from GM. So I'm sticking to it. Enough weird stuff. Let's get this thing in. All right, before we bolt this really expensive transmission in, let's just add this up really quick. Uh, these are just the parts, $5,500 for the level four rated to 1100 wheel horsepower. So 5,500, then we have a $1,500 torque converter. Uh, so that's 7,000. Then it's about 1,500 to assemble the whole thing. So we're at 8,500. Then the cost of a core transmission, which is a few hundred dollars. These things are really expensive uh, with fluid and everything. We're probably around like $9,000. And the van cost me $4,000. So we have doubled the cost of the entire van, right? Right here. It would be funny to list this van as is after we do the transmission. Pretty safe to say everything I'm doing to this van is not gonna add any value to it. So with that, let's, uh, let's go bolt this thing in. I should get a pneumatic trans jack. I always thought those were kind of funny, like you're in that big of a hurry. Now, this is exercise right here. Woo. All right, tip stick is lined up. I'm gonna go back with our little trans safety. It's nice having this chain around the transmission, especially one so expensive. This is so satisfying, mating the transmission and the engine. They were meant to be. They were made for each other, although this is from a CTS V Cadillac going in a 3,500 van. This is, this is probably a first, right? At no point in the life of this van was this supposed to happen. While we wrap everything up with the transmission, I need to take these two drive shafts apart. So I just removed this clamp here. And you can see they're just lined together like that. And I'm gonna bring this to a custom drive shaft shop right now uh, to see what they can come up. I wanna do a one piece, and then we also need a different end going into the transmission, so. All right guys, so it's actually the next day. I wanted to get this van on the road same day, but we had to get modifications done to the drive shaft, which I'll show you. So I dropped it off, they're doing those modifications. In the meantime, we cleaned up the frame even more, uh, let it dry overnight, and while we wait for the drive shaft to get cut up and modified, uh, we are gonna undercoat the entire van. This van is rust-free, we wanna keep it that way, so we're gonna go ahead and spray the entire frame and underbody. This stuff is awesome. So unlike a lot of other undercoating products, this leaves a pretty thick wax, as you can see. 
and it's going on liquid right now, but it's gonna dry and it won't wear off. You won't have to redo this every winter. And it's in an aerosol can, so you guys can do it at home as well. So in about 20 seconds, we have this entire section of the frame rail done and we'll get on the top of the frame rail as well. And we're also gonna do the bottom of the floors. And this stuff is zinc plated, but why not? We're just gonna coat the whole bottom. It's very satisfying to do this. So anyway, in 20 seconds we have practically this entire section done. So I'll use about four cans of this for the entire van. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and bomb the underneath and I'll show you after it's done drying. All right guys, we're done undercoating and we got in everywhere. All these little areas that like to rot out on these full size vans and trucks. We got uh, the rear end, the leaf springs are coated. And of course, all of the frame rails, we got the cross member, everything is done and our drive shaft is back from the drive shaft store. Um, so what we had done here was we had this shortened. So the front drive shaft shortened. We had this end welded on and then we had to buy this. So this is a billet piece that will bolt up to the back of the CTS V transmission. And so we are using the stock steel drive shaft. I had them throw in a new GM center support bearing there and the entire assembly was balanced. So the other option here was getting a one piece drive shaft, but the local drive shaft place couldn't do one that's this long. Um, so I'll have to do my research and see if that's possible on a van like this because it is a little bit stronger. Um, but this is a steel drive shaft, so it should hold up pretty well. I guess we're just gonna find out like a lot of things on this van. We're gonna be testing limits because making a 800,000 horsepower van uh, really, I don't know if it's been done yet on a big 15 passenger. So we're gonna find out if this drive shaft works, but nonetheless, uh, we're ready to go back together with that. But first we have to figure out a transmission mount solution. So the tail housing on this transmission is different for the CTSV in the van. So not only do we have this guy here, um, but the trans mount doesn't line up any longer. You can see where it used to go and we can't do that anymore. So we got a universal. So here's a universal polyurethane transmission mount. So they give you this plate as well. Um, so what we're gonna do here is figure out a solution that looks something like this. Yeah, I think this is gonna work fine. So basically we have these two holes here where the factory transmission mount from the CTS-V would have bolted to, which by the way is a big transmission mount that I'm not sure would work for this, but this should be a cheaper option as well. Uh, so we need to drill two holes in here so that this plate mounts to the back of our transmission. And then we'll have to drill a couple holes into here so that we can bolt this guy up to the cross member. All right guys, so here is our factory transmission mount and it is offset, so it sits right here. So what we did is we used a little spray liquid tape, um, basically any kind of paint would do in this situation. And that way we got everything nice and wet and then simply placed this where it needed to be with the transmission resting in its natural state and it left these marks. So now we know where to drill for these two holes here. And then we also traced out our plate in the same fashion. So we sprayed some of that goopy stuff on there put it here and it gave us these little circles. X marks the spot. All right, first step in drilling a hole is we have to give it a little center punch. Look at that. This center punch tool from Sonic is absolutely amazing. You gotta get one of these. Here is the part number. Very, very high quality tool along with all of their tools. All right, see now we're nice and centered with our drill bit. A little penetrating oil. All right, cool. I'll just move on to this one right away. I'll wipe away our shavings. And we'll have to step it up with the drill bit now. All right, let's see if I've made them the right size. Not yet. One more step up and we'll be good. Perfect. All right, cool. So that's drilled out. This tool is too much fun. I just want to go around to, to metal and just, hold on, this, this converter is no good, right? I'm just going to give it a few. Oh, oh take that. That's oh, so good. My new favorite tool. Look at that. All right. Good guess on that one. 
we're good. All right, so with our holes drilled, we are gonna do a counter sink, and I'll show you why here in a moment. All right, here's our final product with the two countersunk holes, and that will fit a special bolt, like so, that has a shoulder on it. So it won't be perfectly flat, but it'll be good enough for what we need. We're gonna lock tight these guys, and we already bolted in the subframe again, and yeah, it would be easier for us to do this first, but I want to make sure that this whole situation is serviceable. So yeah, we're going to be fine. There's plenty of room in here to get our tools in. All right, this is looking good. Totally factory. You've seen it here first and for, well, only because I got kind of a deal on the transmission, but a CTS V transmission in a 3500 van, this was, this is not normal. The 6L90s are the same. It's just the back end part that's different. All right, now we're gonna go together with our new trans mount. And we got lock washers and Loctite for these. All right, there we go. We got plenty of room in here to tighten these up too with a ratcheting wrench. All right, we're good. Click. All right, transmission is coming down into its new resting place which is the same height as before. We measured the two mounts. There's two rubber humps on this trans mount and it should pull down pretty easy with some hardware. All right guys, drive shafts are going in. Oh yeah, that is such a cool billet piece, I must say. All right, so we have some new hardware, lock washers, lock tight, the whole nine. Just needed one to hold it in. And we can get our center support in. Now we did good on measurements. We had to give the drive shaft shop the measurement from the center of this bolt to this flange right here. And looks like we did a good job. All right, now we can tighten all these guys. So with that all bolted in, we need to put the shaft in properly. They gave us two marks because this is how they balance the assembly together. So we have yellow here and yellow right there. So hopefully that is about right. You wanna be careful with these caps because they can fall out and then all your needle bearings will go everywhere and it's not fun to put that back together. Ask me how I know because I've done it like a bunch of times. All right. Nice. Look at that. We have a drive shaft. We can send power to the differential. You know, if this kind of like unknown transmission works. Common theme here is Loctite on pretty much all of these parts that move around. We don't want anything loosening up, especially with the amount of power we're gonna be throwing at this van eventually. All right, we got a new clamp here. And I don't have the clamping tool, so we're using some side cutters. Okay, so I wanna flush out the transmission cooler on this van, and I actually think it has two of them. Uh, so I took the bolts out of the front grill that should pull out. There we go. It's actually pretty easy. There's like a total of four bolts that hold this whole thing in. So yeah, this is the transmission cooler. This is the external transmission cooler. It still runs through the radiator as well. So this basically has two and we'll not only clean out the exterior, but we have to clean out the lines. And this is actually really nice to see from a cleaning standpoint, because if it was a traditional style, this is the condenser, but if it looked more like this, it'd be a lot harder to clean and I might consider replacing it. But this is basically just a straight through tube. Uh, so we should be able to blow a bunch of transmission fluid through the lines and through the inside of the radiator and we should be good. I ordered up a couple cans of trans cooler flush. So while we wait for that, let's wrap up everything else, including the torque converter bolts. It's time for some torque converter bolts, Loctite as well. And there's only three of them on these GM cars. And we're gonna start all three of them before we really tighten anything down. All right, we'll tighten them up with the gun first. And we're torquing these to 58 foot pounds per circle, these instructions. All right, with the torque converter bolts torqued, we can go back together with our starter and we're going to get this little plastic shield in there first. And we can slide our starter back in. There we go. Nice and easy. These LS starters are very simple for the most part. All right, so we'll just plug it in the vent now. There we go. And then here is where the vent goes. All right. And now we have the main electrical connector that kind of does a little twist back on like that. Pop that in to lock it. Now let's put our shifter linkage back on. Got a couple of bolts to hold up the bracket and there's an arrow right here that says up. 
And then we can attach this guy. All right, there's that. Just a tiny bit of Loctite on this guy as well. Shifter assembly is back together. I'm gonna go ahead and torque this trans pan. And this is just eight foot pounds. All right guys, we're still waiting on the trans flush, but let's get this gigantic exhaust back in. This is gonna be very short lived since we're going with headers. Oh yeah, get in there, dude. You know what they say, a cross thread is better than no thread. That, that thread on the stud was a little mangled, but it's tight. All right, guys, we got the trans cooler flush in, and you only need to use one of these cans, but I'm gonna do two of them just to be on the safe side. But first, let's blow this out with some air, get some of this nasty fluid out. All right, so this is how much fluid was in the coolers, and this is flushing out both of them at the same time since they are connected. But yeah, we don't want any of this stuff in our new transmission. All right, so now we're gonna use our trans flush. There we go. So this is gonna clean out all the shavings. The trans flush was leaking out more than I'd like, so we're gonna try this out, see what happens. I don't wanna waste any of this stuff. Definitely glad we're doing two of these. Yeah, we still got some left. So then we're gonna do this until we're out of the liquid. And then it says to flip the can upside down to use air pressure from the can, but we can also use our shop air pressure too. Do an even better job. Wow, maybe you really only need one can. Yeah, we used to do this at the dealer and we would only use one can and that was per the warranty procedure. Wow. There is a lot in here, we're almost out. Yeah, 13 ounces. I think at the dealer we only used like eight ounce ones, so. The more the merrier. I think this was about like $15 or so. I'll leave you guys a link. Yeah, this is, this is anytime you replace a transmission, you gotta use this stuff. All right, I think we're out. Look at the dude, it's so cool. All right, unscrew this guy. At this point, we're just making a mess. All right, I don't think we need a second one at all, but I wanna reverse flush it now. Oh, look at that. All right, so I switched over our lines so we can flush it the other way. All right, got a brand new can. It takes a little while to go through all the lines and both coolers, the radiator and that external. There we go. Oh, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Back flushing it the other way as well. So we're going through, I think, 20 or $30 worth of this cleaner, but we are also installing like an $8,000 transmission. So I'd say it's worth it. All right, so we're gonna fill each one of these pickle jars up until we see no more metal shavings. And the reason I have three of them is because it might be clear, but if we're using the same container, it'll show us metal shavings from before. So we'll just keep going with this. All right, let's move to another one. After this one, it should be perfect. I gotta say, this is one of the most satisfying things you can do. How are we doing there? This is our third, or no, this is our fourth now. I think we're pretty much out of the liquid at this point. All right, so we went from this glittery goodness waiting to destroy our new transmission to this, even more glitter. And then it started to clean up, but well, you can still see some at the bottom there. And at this point, it's getting a lot better. We'd probably run with this, the filter would pick that up no problem, but why risk it? Got a little bit left in there, and then we did another one, and you can't see anything in there. So we are good. We have two clean transmission coolers. Let's hook up those lines put some fluid in it and see if it shifts. All right, we're just blowing the lines out with air right now, get all this cleaner out of there. Although some of it can stay, it's obviously meant for this. All right, last piece of the puzzle right here. Click. All right guys, we're going back together of course with the good stuff. We want our transmission to last forever. So we're using the AMS oil and we're gonna need a lot for this transmission. All right guys. We got transmission fluid, battery is connected. We should be good here. Well, it immediately sounds better. Remember that pump was screaming before. There we go, let's drive. All right, we just gotta uh, check the fluid and we'll let it warm up a little bit. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it, the van is alive. It shifts. It doesn't move. Yeah, it would have been right around this speed. Yep, right there. It shifted into fourth, we would have been, woo! <laughs> yes, this thing is awesome. So I gotta say for having a built 
transmission in there because I'm assuming they did valve body modifications and all sorts of other stuff. It, it shifts buttery smooth. I mean, it is on the factory tune and a lot of that nowadays is done in the tune, but yeah, it's just, it's just nice. And you'd never know this has like a $9,000 transmission in it. Yeah, it's perfect. The Circle D converter feels awesome. <laughs> She's heavy and slow. That is for sure. <laughs> we gotta fix that. You think this thing will do a burnout? Oh no, it's got like some like a like a rev control. Do they program that into the logic of the 3500 Chevy Express man? Wow, that's getting changed in the tune. It has anti-burnout mode. We can't have that. But anyway, yeah, this thing, it shifts perfectly. It's slow. It handles really bad. And I love it. The paint's peeling. It's got a crack in the windshield. One of the headlights is about to fall out, but it fits 15 people. Actually, it doesn't fit 15 people right now because we're looking for a rear bench, the bench that goes all the way in the back that fits four. So if you guys know of any of those with the same cloth interior, uh, send me an email at legitstreetcars at gmail.com because I'm looking for that. We need to be able to fit 15 people in here uh, for a boosted launch video where I'm gonna get 15 automotive personalities in the car with cameras everywhere and we're gonna rip launches and it's gonna be the Guinness Book of Records for YouTube's biggest launch reaction video. That's a category everybody has thought about. Oh, we gotta get some gas in this thing and you know what? This is the first time we're, we're gonna fill this thing up with 93. It is also flex fuel. Yeah, we're gonna, I'm gonna definitely run E85, but there's no way, okay. We won't fill it up completely here. We'll get some 93 in there and then we'll get some E85 before we really rip it. I love the fact that this thing is flex fuel from the factory, but we're gonna be using that flex fuelness for completely different reasons than what they were thinking. All right, we got about a quarter tank of 93, so like 15 gallons because this tank is huge. This thing just runs so good. 202,000 miles and just barely broken in. I mean, it, it like launches with this converter. You can tell right off the line, it stalls up, it's 2,500. So it puts it more in the power band and it feels great, man. All right, let's go back to the shop and I'll show you guys all the boost that's going under the hood. I teamed up with Pro Charger on the van. I love the guys at Pro Charger. So I told them the goals on the car and they hooked me up with a complete kit. A lot of this is from their truck kit. So they don't make, believe it or not, <laughs> no one makes a supercharger kit or really any high performance aftermarket stuff for a Chevy Express van, but it's close enough that I think we'll be able to make it work. This is for the same year truck. So yeah, and it's gonna sound killer. So at idle, we should be able to hear this thing going, making all sorts of cool noises. Best packaging ever. Saving that. Yes, oh yeah, and I told him satin black for all the tubes. Super high quality satin black. Look at all this. Oh, this is gonna be so nice. That's for the blow off valve. We got, all right, we got all of our hoses and clamps. God, I, I've done Pro Charger stuff before. Just phenomenal quality, just the best. Okay, this looks like the intake tube going into the throttle body. Oh, and we have to we have to pin the crank. So they sent us the uh, balancer uh, pin crank kit, and uh, we have some PCV tubing. The van's got this built trans; it needs this now. Of course, we have our belts. And what's really awesome about this kit, one of the many reasons I went with it, is because it retains the six rib. Uh, factory accessory drive. So we don't have to mess around with an eight or a 10 rib and then getting all new accessories and crazy brackets and all that. Yes! Oh yeah. Oh. Get out of here. That's, that's, that's what it sounds like. So we went with a D1 SE. A lot of guys are running, you know, 800, 850 wheel horsepower with this guy. Look at it. Yeah, we're gonna be able to do the same too. Sweet. All right, let's put this back in its temporary home. Uh, looks like we have an air filter. Yeah, air filter in there. Let's just take a look at the intercooler and and then you guys gotta stay tuned for the next video. Yes. So this is an air to air system. 
Uh, so I'm definitely just going for kind of like simplicity here. Uh, so we don't have a coolant pump or anything like that, which those systems work well and I've used them in many of my cars. Air to air, there's no pump to go bad, no coolant leaks to worry about. And we're gonna be using this van a lot. Yeah, this is a really nice one. Well, we gotta leave this wrapped up for now. I'll get into way more details on this in the next video. Um, yeah, I mean, we have to build the fuel system. We have the long tube headers, um, but I think we're gonna have to bolt this Pro Charger on in the next video and just, just in case we need to figure stuff out and order more parts. I think that would make the most sense. So anyway, we're gonna keep rocking on the van. It's gonna be Pro Charged. We're gonna be doing the filled van with cans event. And you guys are gonna be able to see this thing with the Pro Charger on. It's gonna be tuned by then and, and just ready to, to, to do burnouts and carry lots of cans. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. The van is back. And if you did, give it a big thumbs up. Share the video with your friends and family and other van enthusiasts. I know you guys are out there. And most importantly, have an awesome day. I'll see all of you in the next video. How's my voice? La, 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 la. I think I'm holding about a thousand down. I don't know, it's pretty built up. If we blow it up, that means we're doing something really good in the front here. Party in the front and party, we need to party all over the place in this van. And then simmer, similarly, I can never, similarly, similarly. <laughs> Let's get this huge, really heavy exhaust in. Yeah, I gotta do the back first time. All right.